Right, so this is a look at medium sized survival tin. As you can see, this is your big two ounce tin. This is a tin I got with playing cards. And this is a small tin, the kind about the size what you'd get like a through night torch in. So this is the medium size one. Now what I do, I'll show you what's in this one and kind of give a description of some of the stuff I've put in it. And then what I'll do, I'll also show you some extra stuff that if I had a bigger tin or a different type of kit than what I'd put in that. Because I was also thinking about doing one in one of these. That's a fair bit bigger. I think it's bigger than... It's a little bit bigger than the two ounce or the big tobacco tins. Only just though. So I'll show you some extra stuff which I can't fit in this one but I probably would put in others. So it's just ordinary tin. I haven't put nothing on it yet. I haven't put nothing around it. I probably would seal it with electrical tape. So that's it there. So this is just ordinary cotton wool. Obviously most of you will know use that for fire lighting. But you can also use that for cleaning wounds and stuff like that. As long as it's not dirty. You might want to put some of that in a bag and have some of it out of the bag for cleaning wounds or whatever. So then we've got brass snare wire. I'm not sure the size of this one. But there's enough that you could wind it round and double it up and still make one snare. Or you could have two thinner snares. Just move this a bit. A snare there. So, here I've got three... Three fishing hooks. And I did have some which hasn't got an eye. It's like a spade ended one. But these have actually got a little loop to tie through. Three different sizes. I think it's 10. I know one of these is 10 and it's the next two sizes down. Got a small torch. Ten strike anywhere matches. You can waterproof those with either candle wax or hairspray, stuff like that. And obviously for making fire, catching fish, you could probably rig up some other traps with these, but best thing to do with those is catch fish obviously. You can make some horrible cruel traps with those, but you know, it depends, it's a survival situation. And your torch would be for seeing in the dark or for signalling. So I've got a small hacksaw blade. And this is one with, I think it's 18 teeth per inch. This is quite a rough one. And you'd be surprised what you can cut with one of these. These will cut wood very easily. And also, because it is a hacksaw blade, you have got the potential that you could cut metal with it as well.
and what I've done I've just put a bit of tape so you could just get it on your finger like that and then you'd hold it like this and kind of saw like that I may update that later I may change that to a jigsaw blade and put a little handle on it now this It's a needle and thread and it's in it's a piece of masking tape put the needle on and then I've put clear tape over and I've left the ends so you can peel it apart and it's a large I don't know if you can see but it's got a massive a massive eye on it a massive hole whatever and this thread I got is the strongest thread that I could find. It's this. It's this. Guterman heavy duty um, sewing thread, I suppose. And even trying to break it with your, your hand. It's strong stuff. You'd be surprised. Now for sewing thread, that's probably the strongest I've found so far. And for a good price as well. Obviously you see the size of this tin, there's only so much you can get in it. So this may have been a waste of space. It may have been better if I got this and wrapped it around the outside. But I thought I prefer, I prefer everything in the tin and it's sealed up and it doesn't kind of rub and just is a little tin, you know, not a tin wrapped up in cord. So I think I put in here 10 foot of 270 pound breaking strain cub cord. Now I might change that to a red cub cord later. And I might change anything I've put tape on, I might change the tape to red as well. So if you drop it, you can find it. Now here is a little ferro rod and striker. And what I've done, I've had some small ferro rods and I've just pulled the rod out of it. Put a bit of tape at one end so you can just about hold it. And then there's the striker. And if you do use it and you wear one end down, you can always take this tape off and swap it to the other end. And the same with the saw. I know it's not much, but you could take the tape. If you wore this end down, you could take this tape off and swap it to the other end. At least you'd have a little bit of saw to use again. And the same with a ferro rod. So that can be took off if you like and changed to the other end. And this is my favourite thing that I've made. Little duct tape sheath. And it's a knife. What's been made from a number 22 heavy duty exacto blade and I was well surprised when I got these how thick and strong these are the number 22 heavy duty exacto blade and I moulded some kydex around as a small handle and then I bound it I glued it in and then bound it with thread and then put glue on top of that as well. And there's a little knife. You can hold that alright. Obviously you're not going to cut nothing massive with it. But these knives are pretty, pretty razor sharp. So you could do a fair bit with them. You could always probably lengthen the handle if you wanted to. Out in the woods. Now a little knife made out of an X-Acto blade. And kydex and that goes back in there 
and I suppose even this bit of tape if it come to it you could use that for something now I've got this is just a small roll of duct tape just a small square bit of duct tape and you just undo it like that and then just keep going to unravel it and use that for whatever you need to I suppose you can make flights for arrows, tape stuff up you know, whatever some fishing line I think that was £10 fishing line what I got. Small compass. A few different assorted plasters. And if you needed anything bigger, you could probably get away with using the duct tape or maybe some of the cotton wool. Or take apart some of these plasters and put some bits on to make a bigger plaster with the duct tape. Now this is a square sheet of heavy duty tin foil. You could use this for all sorts of things. You could use it, you can make it into a cone. There's a little cup, make it into a little container for cooking in, as long as your fire wasn't too hot. Quite a few different things you could use that for to do with cooking. Four water purification tablets. So I think these do one litre, so that's at least four litres you'll be able to do with them. I've got a drinking straw in here. I'll explain that in a bit more detail in a minute. But obviously you could suck up water with this. But any water you're going to be sucking up out of things, you're going to want to sterilise in the first place. So, Let's dig this out of here. There's a fishing weight there. I need to put a couple more in here, I think. Birthday candle. Wrapped up in tin foil, but I'd probably take that off first. I did try and do a test of I lit two candles, one with the tin foil and one without. The one without the tin foil burnt away quicker, but what this one ended up doing, it burnt away more, you know, slowly. But once it got down to about here, it actually went out. So what you then needed to do was take some of the tin foil off and relight it again. But if matches and stuff. You know, a bit scarce. You want one that's just going to burn. Not have to keep lighting it. Now, one thing I don't ever put in my survival kits is a condom. And I'll explain why. And people say about using a condom as a water, a water carrier, a water bag. But there's only so much you can do with a condom. I don't know if you've ever seen someone try and fill fill a uh, condom up out of a river or whatever but it's not that easy you have to kind of get a bit of a method especially if the water's still and slow you have to kind of scoop it and get it in and then carrying it is like carrying a water balloon you know and it's got nothing you know you'd have to tie it up lay it if you wasn't going to use it tie it up lay it down very carefully untie it it wasn't won't really stand up or anything so what i use or put in my survival kits is a carrier well it's like a freezer bag but it's got handles on it now you could use there's two of these in here and you could use this for loads of different things one you can scoop water with this much easier you could probably peg it open and catch rainwater 
you could also use this just for carrying stuff if you've got a tin which is bare metal and I've seen people boil water in these and things like that well you're going to want to take all your survival kit out of it you can take that out put it in the bag in one of the bags and use the other bag for collecting water in also with a bag like this you can do the evaporation method of collecting water where you put the bag over a tree branch and then tie it up and then let it kind of sweat out and you'll get water collecting the corner now I can't really see you doing that very well with a condom so I think personally a bag like this is going to be much more useful than a condom and there's two of those in here personally much more uses I think so that's I probably could fit a couple more little things in this one but the only thing is I hate like really stuffing things into a survival tin because I've done that before and when you look everything's you know things are bent or broken you know all the heads on your matches have come off your candle will all be snapped up so I think it's always better if you can leave a little bit of space and you'll notice if you ram them in all your water purification tablets will all be crushed so I'll just move this aside and I'll show you a couple of things that if I had a bigger a bigger tin or a small bag some of the other things I'd put in it now one would be paracord as well as the cub cord the reason I put the cub cord in this one as you can see look see the difference you know you can fit cub cord in a small tin like this quite easy and I think I've got 10 foot in here a 10 foot of paracord is going to be a lot more bulkier the only way you'd get it with the kit is probably tying it around the outside so that's something else I would put in one definitely but not a small tin like this another thing would be now I need to trim this up a bit though is catapult elastic or any type of elastic like this cut it into strips about an inch wide I uh, can't remember how long, about 20, let's see, about that, <laughs> about that long, I can't remember precisely how long I used to have them, cut them into strips and then you can use that for traps or for making a catapult or a sling bow, but it's best to cut them into strips rather than have a big piece like that, that's something else I'd definitely put in a survival tin. Another one is the Fresnel lens magnifying glass, but like these little cards type ones. Now if I could have got a small, a small round one about the same size as the compass, I would have put that in there. But that's something else I would put in there. Another thing would be, if it's a bigger tin, a lighter. As well as the other stuff, I'd put a lighter in there. And, and or, depending on the ferro rod, but the ferro rod is small. You know, that's going to fit in there right. Just a striker from a lighter. a bit of cotton wool those light easily another thing a small bit of super glue or maybe one of them smaller ones that's ideal for all sorts of things I know people say you can put it on wounds and some people say never put this kind of super glue on wounds but I suppose see you know whatever happens happens if you're bleeding to death you might have to um but also making things and attaching things to things super glue is absolutely brilliant 
super glue and a bit of cord. And then one other thing I'd definitely put in a survival tin or a kit, depending on the size, is a bandana. But obviously this is not going to go in here with all this lot. It may not even go in one of these ones. It may have to be a bigger, bigger box for one like a car or something. Well, that's a few things I've got in medium size. Oh, I didn't tell you what the straw was for. What you do with a straw, you've probably seen this on a different video anyway. Fill your bags up with water and then you hang it from something. You put your straw in and then you can just drink your purified. So put your water in, put your pu water purification tablet in. Stick this in, and then you can just drink your water through a straw. Rather than trying to tip the bag up into your mouth or anything. Also, I don't know how you're going to, if you did have a condom, how are you going to drink out of it? Try to hold a condom and pour the water to undo the top of it, and then try and hold a condom in your hands and try and pour the water into your mouth. You're going to need a straw with that or with a bag. So that's why the straw's in there. Right, so that's a few things I've got or would put in a medium size survival tin. Right, anyway, cheers for watching and I'll see you later.